Yeah, and I, I mean, I absolutely agree. It's, it is, it's a very, um, it's a challenging thing to want to travel. And I, I love to travel and my, my, you know, my father took us to Mexico and Central America when I was young and um, we camped out in um, ancestral Mayan um, villages while he was doing field work and I have always felt a, a deep kinship with those places because of course our ancestors traveled up and down and um, those um, those relationships are millennia old and I have not only a great respect um, admiration but also just love for those um, for those countries and the um, the areas not the country the the people and the areas that they live in but it's also um, difficult to um, participate in as Melanie said it is imperialism particularly one of my favorite places is, is Guatemala and I I just love the land and the people and when I was there last, you know, looking around, they looked like my relatives and my um, my people from my community. And I felt so at home. And I also saw things like the colonialism and the, the churches all over the place and um, the coffee plantations. I personally love coffee, too, um, but I'm not all that fond of all of those like Starbucks places that are growing coffee for Starbucks. Um so how do we, how do we make these, how do we keep up these relationships that, that we have as indigenous people with the land and um, with, with people that we view as relatives without participating in that imperialism, without participating in, in that um, commodification and um, how do we support uh, the people um, the real people, the, the people on the ground, um, in such a way that we're doing so as kin and not as, as tourists. And um, when, when uh, Melanie was talking about the, going to visit the trees and, the, and the, um, making offerings, and I, mean, I do the same thing. And when I, I generally, like, almost absolutely vehemently avoid Europe um, because to me those are all colonizers and like all of the statues and all of the monuments and all of the palaces and the and the castles and the museums and all that I mean there it's all made from blood money with um, through colonization and resource extraction and genocide and so it gives me the creeps but I did go to Scotland um, because um, my mother actually um, is was was her heritage was Scottish, and um, my grandfather talked a little bit um, about Scotland when, when I was a, a small child and I wanted to go there. And the old forest, and there's not much left in Scotland of the old forests, but in the highlands, um, where it's the least populated area in Europe, which I love, um, also felt right at home because my husband is Diné and there's a lot of sheep, so I was really comfortable there. Um, but the old, we went into the old, old area, one of the national parks there, and we're walking around, and you can see the Caledonian pines, and there's not many Caledonian pines left. All that old growth forest was, um, was, cut down. Um, but we were walking around there, and I just, I needed to pull out my cornmeal and make an offering, and then, I started having a conversation with the little people, and if you're indigenous, you know about the little people and cause they're all over and, and I just felt like this was a place where there was little people. And I, so I wanted to make an offering for the little people too. So I had some trail mix and I left some trail mix, um, under a rock for the little people. And like, to me, that was like the most meaningful experience was seeing the, these old trees and feeling, um, this old, old energy, this pre, colonization for want of a better word like these forests had been around before the church was established before they they took what historically in Scotland was um, a matriarchal um, 
uh, people and turned them into something very different. So that was a, a really moving moment for me. And um, in, in, in Guatemala, also in um, Brazil, and um, even in, in Costa Rica, like seeing the scarlet macaw is, is um, another moment for me that is so powerful because these are the birds that um, my ancestors used their tail feathers for, still use the tail feathers for dancing. But these birds are our relatives. They were so honored um, in our dances and ceremonies that, you know, we use their their feathers. And so I see these birds and I automatically know this is an area where my relatives were hundreds and hundreds of years ago, millennia ago. And um, so I, I want to show respect for that at the same time. Um, you know, understand that this was also, this is, you know, a place where my ancestors came. So it's also very much, um, it feels like home to me too.